Hello and welcome to Frank's School. I'm back in my accustomed rags. Uh, beginning of a new year. The, the 12 days of Christmas are over. Uh, as of today, this is Monday, uh, in real time. Uh, yesterday, Sunday, was the end of the 12 days of Christmas. Well, uh, now what? <laughs> I've done this other years. I've come to this point and, and, and wanted to give an idea of what's going to happen in Frank's School. Each year it, it gets a little trickier because I'm going into new territory, uh, things I've never taught before. Uh, the first year it was real clear to me. Well, the big news is there's going to be no Macbeth. I am not going to uh, guide you through a viewing of, uh, of the movie Macbeth. I, I bought this uh, online and I looked at it. This was the one I was going to use, not all of it. Uh, I would not dare, well, I wouldn't want to use all of it. Uh, Roman Polanski's. I think it's the best that I've seen. And I haven't looked real hard. I think it's the best, but there are problems. Uh, well, there's nudity in it, which is a problem. It's really too gory in parts. And when I researched it, and I found out that Roman Polanski was married to uh, Sharon Tate. Is that her first name? Sharon Tate? Famously murdered by Charles Manson. I thought, whoa, this is, this, he, he made this movie after that had happened. Oh, it, uh, in any case, it's too dark. Uh, it's too dark. It, even for 10th graders, I would not use it in school. Um, and I don't actually think it would be good to see it as a movie. Rather, I think, see, I admire it greatly. It's a great play, and the poetry in it is maybe the best of any Shakespearean play. There remain four tragedies that I would give my time to if I were an English teacher, or maybe I would anyway. Othello, uh, Macbeth. I understand why they use Macbeth in textbooks. Because at this point, I defer to English teachers. Uh, an English teacher... Well, let me well let me finish saying Mac, uh, Othello, Macbeth, King Lear, and Hamlet. And uh, uh, you stay out of the camera. Um, uh, King Lear and Hamlet. Those are the four that I really think are, are worth your while to see. Uh, but back to this, I, I realized I had sort of a enlightenment. I'm a an humanities teacher, not not just an English teacher. And I would defer to an English teacher for English class to read through uh, uh, Macbeth. That, I think, there would be a good play to actually read. I would uh, first have every student buy their own cheap copy, about $2, would get you a Dover Thrift Edition. Go through it and strike out all the lines which you would take out for a screenplay, which they often do. Lines that, even if they were well presented, well acted out, a modern audience would not understand what was being said. Stri strike them all out. Get the class to go through it before you read it. Then read it. And as you read it, uh, aloud, have the students read it. And let them know in advance what part they were going to be reading. And uh, check to see, do you understand what you have just said? Uh, we always did that with, this, with the, uh, oh, we did maybe a total of 15 plays in 25 productions while I had the Shakespearean troupe in the public schools uh, that volunteered by me after school. <clears throat> anyway, that's how we would start. We would uh, reduce the play, not change the words. We never changed the words. We just got rid of what people would not understand, just like they do in a screenplay. And then we would have an oral reading. And that was so satisfying to sit around a table. If you had like 10 kids or, or so, that would be great. Uh, so anyway, I'm deferring to Macbeth. It is, the poetry is wonderful. So uh, what am I actually going to do? Well, class vocabulary. I had said I'm going to give it another try. I tried it the first year. It failed uh, to, to catch on online. I tried it the second year. No response. So I went through the whole thing. And it's in my course. I think it's there as a, as a playlist. I'm going to try it again. And yeah, maybe, it, maybe it'll catch on this time. Maybe I'll get some participation. I don't know. We'll see. And the other thing I'm going to do is why I turn, thought about this is because in, a, in real time, or not real time, but when I was teaching school, after the students came back after Christmas vacation, 
they were kind of in a daze, a little bit like after summer vacation. Where am I back in school? And I always liked to uh, use, to study a film. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I thought, well, all right, so I've run out of Shakespearean uh, films that, that, that I would do this with. You see, I went through the comedies. Uh, what other films are there? You know, could I take some other film to study it? Now, I was never content, never content to simply put a, a film on and say, okay, kids, enjoy this film. They don't need a teacher for that. I wanted a film that you could teach your way through. And I thought about Amadeus. I, I thought about, you know, what are the greatest films I know or, or that would be suitable? Amadeus, maybe. The Madness of King George. Yeah, maybe because you could discuss the, uh, the soundtrack in the Magnus, Madness of King George, every note you hear was composed by Handel, George Frederick Handel. But anyway, I, I, personally, I decided to go back to watch this again, The Day the Universe Changed, for my own edification, for my own education. And it dawned on me, I thought, why not see if I could guide my viewers through this? It's going to be hard, but it's online. At least, as I'm fairly sure you're going to be able to just... I'll give you a link and you go right to it and you can watch it. So that I'm going to be doing, these two immediately. I haven't forgotten about Wedge's Paradigm. That's like this monster ahead of me. I am determined to tackle that. And the paradigm itself won't be too hard. But the result, where that then takes me, once I've shown that to my viewers, so now what? That is another matter. We'll see. A paradigm is a way of organizing information. Uh, well, okay, I, I will be discussing a trip to Germany that I almost certainly am going to be making. Uh, uh, you know, I'll discuss the preparation for it and what I hope from it. That trip uh, I'll be making at the end of March. German, I, I think I'll go back to teach some more German. And at the moment I'm thinking about actually teaching some German grammar. Uh, it's high time that I show you some about the German grammar. And then various projects, uh, ultimately leading to the Old and Other Ways Museum, which is the sum of all these projects that I have out there. Uh, one of them, for example, is that huge fireplace and chimney, which today I'm going to really fire it up if the chimney didn't blow down. Tonight it's going to be historically cold weather. <coughs> And I, if, the, if the fireplace works, I'm going to burn it as long and as hot as I can today to get all that masonry warmed up, and it'll carry it over through the night, like, like what's called in German a kachelofen, uh, a masonry oven. In a way, that's what it is. So there'll be more of that. So there's what's coming, and, uh, and tomorrow, uh, these, two, these two things, I'll be dealing with them. All right, I uh, hope, to, hope to see you tomorrow.